Hi everyone. Okay, um, we're going to be doing something today, and um, I saw a picture of a like a shawl. It's basically the a back piece which you kind of um, drape over in front and pull the two ends together and cross them in front. So you, I don't really know how long the front is going to be until I've done the back. You see. So we're going to do a 33 inch back. It has to be pretty long because you have to go over your shoulder and bring it across down, you see. After I have gotten an idea of how far it can go in front and how low it is here, then only I can calculate the amount I will need for the front, you see. So let's work the back first. We will do it in, um, we'll start off with, the, with a garter bottom. And since we're using this yarn, and based on the off shoulder piece that I did before, it's the same composition. It's 40% wool, 60% acrylic, 50 gram ball, which is very long, 150 meters or 164 yards. And it uses needles of between 3.5 to 4 millimeter knitting needles or crochet hook, you see. So it is a uh, quite thin. So again, you will get, I'm using the 62 peg loom this loom and it's a 62 peg loom. The reason I'm using this long loom is because we're going to have to drape this on to your shoulders, over your shoulders. From the back, you drape it down and cross it. You see, you cross it here in front so that you'll get something like a cowl collar, except there is no additional piece that's going to um, flap out from here, you see. And I think this was called a shawl sweater or something like that you know so then where this ends is where the opening for the sleeve is you know we will also do a sleeve and we will have this um, bottom piece which will come only later so as a result when we did before the off shoulder one the yarn was able to give us about 20 inches 20 21 I was able to get 22 because I was using the linen stitch but this time we're going to be using the twisted stocking net so I with 18 inch uh, loom that was giving us actually 20 inches for 50 pegs so this this one has 62 pegs so for 62 pegs we should be able to get about 24 so we'll work 24 by 33 after we've worked uh, done the garter for maybe about 10 rows of uh, 5 rows pearl, 5 rows knit that is alternating the pearl and the knit and then you start the twisted stocking net and when once you reach 33 we will come back and I'll give you the measurement around then how much the front is supposed to be for it to match the back. I can't tell you right now how much it is until I'm able to see how it drapes over my shoulder. Need to do is to drape it over your shoulder like this and see where it ends here just slightly I think midway on your chest on your breast you know you can see this is the 33 inch back piece that I've done and it um, comes around up to there and then check how far down it goes and try and mark it Mark it so that you can see how much of a front you will have to do. This is what in effect you'll be doing. You know, you are bringing it over your shoulder here. Sorry, it's a bit dark. Bringing it over your shoulder. So your shoulder will be here. It will, it will be of course slightly up there. And then you're taking it down. And here this part will be joined to the front. Both this part. And this part will form a kind of a very charming looking folded collar, you know. And here will be where you'll be joining to the front part, you see. So that's why it's called a shawl uh, sweater, you see. Because what you're in effect doing is taking the back piece and draping it over your back like a shawl. And then joining it to the front. My front is about 15 inches. If you want, you can use that measurement. But, you know, even if your back is a little longer and your front is a little shorter, it doesn't matter. You know, you can just, um, you can have... You can perhaps leave a little bit of the part not joined so that even if one is shorter than the other or if they don't quite match, it won't really matter. It will look like it's part of the 
the design of the sweater you see it's what all you know whenever you're not very accurate with your measurement you must always try to make it look like it's part of the pattern you know so that you get something that that in in the end looks good just in case you don't understand what i'm trying to tell you about draping your the back huh? let me just demonstrate okay this is the 33 inch piece that i've done now just imagine that this is your body the front of your body you know so you lay this at the back and um, you're trying to drape this in front okay so this will be your head somewhere here you know somewhere here is your head so you're going to bring it round like this see this part here this one you bring it down and over your breast one side and do the same for the other side that is what basically you're doing okay i hope you can understand from there that's what you are you you stand in front of the mirror drape it over yourself and then take the measurements of how much you will need to match the back Now the front do the same thing do the chain cast on and work uh, all the 22 uh, inch pegs i mean sorry um, the 62 pegs which gives you around 22 23 inches i was only able to get around 23 inches and i couldn't get 24 so um what i what you're going to do is that you're going to cast on all the 62 pegs do a chain cast on and work 15 inch in a twisted stocking net and don't forget to add the rib, which I did for the back and I, I used a chain, um, knit one pearl one rib instead of doing a garter, garter stitch. Actually, I made a mistake. I was going to go, go with the garter and then I had already done it probably because I had just come off working the other pattern, you know, where I had been doing ribbing on the off shoulder sweater and so, you know, it just came just naturally and I didn't even realize I'd made a mistake when I'd already gone almost nine rows before I, I realized what I'd done you see so I just decided to keep it so let's do this 15 inches and then we'll come back so I'm always telling people about how when you are working with the loom eh, this loom here that you mustn't close this uh, uh, when you're do doing a flat panel you know you mustn't close this well what happened was I don't know, I probably was very sleepy or I wasn't really paying attention. I was probably watching the Korean drama and trying to do the the knitting at the same time. And what I did was I closed one side and I managed to open the other side. So halfway through, <coughs> on my back part, from about this point around here, I had joined about this much of it on this side and I opened up here, you know. So the whole thing was off one side which had already been closed earlier <coughs> there was an opening and the other side which had been open all the time there was a closure so what i did was i took a one of those stitch markers you know the the those long ones that you get sorry stitch holders like these you know and i picked up all the 62 stitches approximately and then i took the whole work off the loom and then i just unraveled everything up to the point and then i i using these stitch holders i I, I took out, unraveled it until the point where I was able to come to the stitch holder and some point of it, some of the stitch holders were above and some were below. So I had to make everything, I had to take out and what I did was I put around 8-9 stitches on each of the stitch holders, you see, so that even when I found that some of the stitch holders had, was below, so I had to unravel more, I, I could take it off and unravel and then put it back you see since it was eight nine stitches there was no real danger i was going to lose all the the stitches you see after i had done that you see now and then i put it back onto the loom and then worked the rest of it you know from here to here and finished it off but you notice when i put it back onto the loom due to some mistake you notice this see here it is not joined to one of the ones at the back so i'm going to show you how to repair this if you ever had this kind of a problem and you've missed a stitch or like me you had a little disaster and had to do some adjustments to um, not have to frog the whole thing and come back to the point where you will be able to continue without really wasting all the work you know i think almost one day's work worth i, I lost you know 
okay now i'm going to show you how you handle this now this is the the thread that is not joined to anything so i want to join it to something first you cut off a little piece of uh, yarn i had a little piece of yarn now of course i've lost it ah there it is ah, there. okay so what you do is uh, it's too dark every now and then it becomes too dark okay there now here this is the one that is loose you take a crochet hook take the part that is loose and hook it on to the one that you want it to stick on to here it is this particular uh, loop you know so pick up that loop also put this over the crochet hook and pull both through until you have it like that and then what you do is you just tie a knot a dead knot so now this thing is connected here and you just kill it off make a couple more of the surgeon's knot and kill off this knot and cut it as close as you can and now you no longer have it not joined to the back and being loose just do a surgeon's knot one two pull it tight and snip it off there so now it won't look like there's a problem see in front you can't see anything see you just put it back onto the thing so that it's not hanging out there without having anything See, because it was a mistake on my part, you see. So when I put it, when I, because I had lost 62 stitches, you see. So I made a mistake when I was putting it back onto the loom. I must have uh, accidentally slipped off one of the loops, you see. So it continued. You see, the loop is very long here in comparison to the rest. So now I've joined it back. And so that, that should be, that should work. Okay. One further thing I forgot to tell you, you know, I was telling you about how I had to put back the thread and um, what happened was after I put back all the stitches that I had unraveled and then I brought it back to the stitch holder, this yarn, you see how this yarn comes out from this direction, right? But the other one, the yarn was going inside here and coming out on the other side of the loom, this side, you know, there wasn't anything I could have done, you see, so I, there was nothing, it's the way that I put it back, you know. So what I did was, I, there's no way I was going to take everything out again. I just snipped it off and I, I cut it cut it off and then I rejoined it by, after I pulled off the thing from, un, from it going in this direction, I pulled it back out again for it to come out in the right way and then I rejoined the thread. So if ever you ever come across this kind of a problem, you know what to do. Okay, I've, I've re-measured the thing. I have... Um, pulled and pinned it onto my t-shirt on my body itself and I found that the front has to be about 17 inches for the measurements that I have. I had 33 right for the back. So you need about 17 inches for it to match the sides. It's up to you, you know. I, the only way you can find out is to actually drape it over your shoulder and bring it in front, cross it in front like this. Like it is here, crossed here like this. And maybe you pin it onto a shirt that you're wearing you know and then you measure from here and see wh whether it matches to the back and how much you get mine is about 17 okay after you've completed the front and the back you place the back here okay you place the back on the back and you put the front here okay so wrong sides are matching here and what you do is you pin up all along the side you pin it all up although here is where the armhole is supposed to be but never mind you pin it all the way up on both sides you know both sides you pin it up on both sides you pin the sides up okay because you want to have the measurement exact okay this is the bottom this is the bottom part okay you pin both sides up all the way now here is where the excess bit is you know so what you do is you take it now you see this is how it is now you take the corner and bring it fold it down okay cross it and pin it all the way 
before you do that though before you do that before you pin that get the center of the front and mark it with a stitch marker I have a purple stitch marker I can't use the purple color obviously <laughs> okay make sure you get the center go from one end to the other it's about 22 so it's about 11 the center is about 11 so you see I didn't get the extra that I was hoping I might get So when you pin this down here, make sure you don't exceed the center. Don't go beyond this point. So the edge, when you fold it down this way, put this edge here and then join all this up to here. And do the same with this side. Okay, do the same with the other side until you get both sides and you join them up. When you've joined up, let's see how it looks after you join it up. But don't join this part here. Make sure you leave a gap for your arm so that your arm can go through. So this is what I meant. You pin it down and here is the opening for your arm. This part here is the opening for your arm here and here you've pinned it down so the curve comes here now do the same for the other side take it down bring it to the point where the stitch marker is you marked it there right in the center This is to give you an idea what how the joint should be you see after that you're gonna to have to use a needle and thread and uh, sew it up okay and again you remove this join it as far as you can okay there this is how it's supposed to look okay this is the top part and this is the arm and this is the neck part now you can go on to YouTube and look how to join when one side is in this direction and you're joining it to a piece that go the stitches are going in this direction and one the stitches are going in this direction you can check on YouTube there are how to sew this uh, kind of a thing to make it as uh, pretty as possible and from there you do the stitches my suggestion is that you start from the end here and then you stitch like that you know this should be big enough for your head to go through you see there shouldn't be any problem with that okay I don't know whether I see my sister-in-law suggested that um, I don't uh, put the sleeves I may decide not to put sleeves in the end you know because it's a pretty dark piece so maybe I won't I will just perhaps I'll wear an undershirt of a different color and put this on top see how it goes okay okay before you um, do anything before you sew or do anything on the uh, this uh, shawl sweater 
I suggest that you try it on first after you have, uh, I decided to take out all those pins, you know, and I just use stretch markers for the join here. Okay. Now, and then you open out here so that you can have your sleeve. Try it on first to see how it, whether it drapes properly or not before you sew anything. Okay, what I've done is that I have um, tried it on and there has been no problem at all. The um, sleeve part doesn't look awkward. There isn't any uh, funny, um, f like, a f like a gather or something like that. It's a smooth uh, shoulder and a sleeve. So you can do it this way, no problem. So what you do is you pin up from the bottom and then you go up and then only you join this part here so that you'll get matching sides. Okay? What I decided here is that, um, you know here, you see this? I'm thinking, you bring this, don't put it in the center, take it across slightly and come up here and this one you sew it inside a bit across so that you get a, a little bit of an overlap. I think that would be prettier, you know? than if you just put it at the edge both. So try and do one side first. This the inner part, bring this and put it inside here, sew this first, then sew this and bring it across. So that you can have an overlap like that. I think that would be prettier. Okay, here is the center part of the uh, sweater, I've decided to join the thing like an overlap, you know, so that this part will come here and then this one you overlap it like that. So in front there's an overlap, you know, of like that. You can see an overlap like that. So if you want to know how to join this kind of a horizontal to a vertical knit like this, I think it's in the set in sleeves you can look on YouTube, you know. The idea is actually for you to pick up these stitches here you see this each of these stitches you pick up and you join them to the center bar that is here here these bars okay the center bar between the two knit stitches there's a bar in between no you pick up this bar and you join it to one of these every time and you get a almost seamless edge so join the um, top part to this, adjust the sleeve opening and you should be done. Here, the one I was telling you to pick up down here was each of the knit stitches, you know, you go through one like that, you know. You pick up one of these every time. And you go to the next one and you pick up the next one, you know, like that and you join it to the bridge in between and as you can see here i have pulled this across this was the center peg where i was the center marking i put a stitch marker there you go all the way up to here you join it a bit further than the center so that you get a slight overlap hope that's clear Okay, I have um, managed to do one side of the um, the top, you know, where you join. Now, if you see here, this is the center part of the sweater, the center. And you see, I have gone over this much for this side, you know, for this particular side. I've already joined it. And... Now I'm going to do on this side. I just want to show you how to join a horizontal to a vertical knit. Here it's in horizontal here, this way. And this is coming up way, this way, which is vertical. So, okay. Now, I, although I have yarn here on the side here, I can't start the join from here. You see, I have to start the join from this side, this end. So you too remember that huh? when you're doing this, you have to start the join from here. Now this is where the center point is. So you bring this and overlap it over this here. Okay. 
now the first thing you do is you look for all the center bits you know where the thing separates here these things you these bars here you can see these bars here right so you pick a bar okay this is a bar okay I know it's dark it's a bit difficult to see but I think if you if you go and search on YouTube horizontal and vertical knit stitches how to join you'll get a very good video on that now you come here this is the center you can see the green thing from here you know where I mark the center go a bit further in and pick up a knit stitch knit stitch here okay now go back pick another one of those bars next bar go down pick another knit stitch yeah these are the knit stitches you know pick another the V of the knit stitch you know here pick another knit stitch Okay, tighten it a bit. You don't want it to be too loose. Eh? Now go back, pick another bar. Next bar. Go down. Pick another knit stitch. And keep doing this until you reach the end here and finish it off okay um, here I noticed when I was doing this huh, that um, some of the stitches I had to pick up two bars huh? it, because um, otherwise this the distance isn't enough so sometimes um, in fact here I think mostly I picked up two bars instead of one you know so space it out you know if you find that the stitching isn't good enough take it out and take out and you and pick up two bars and here you pick up one knit stitch but if you think that you need less then you take one bar and then pick up one knit stitch then maybe two bars and then pick up one knit stitch you know just adjust it accordingly here i started doing the join i started from the bottom first huh, because i haven't done the top part the join on the shawl bit you know I'm starting from the bottom because I think uh, it's better to do the mattress stitch and you do it from the bottom as you can see here I've done the mattress stitch it's almost invisible the seam no do that go all the way and then of course don't forget to leave an opening for the armhole you can um, leave it unfastened you know towards the end and then try it on and then um, adjust until you get the proper armhole length that you are comfortable with you know how much exposure you want under the arm you know um, because um, that's entirely up to each person's taste you see so um, before you join this make your mind up on that and then uh, finish off with this join I won't be doing the sleeve I think it looks prettier I tried it on and I think the sleeves will make it too dark you know especially with my skin color I think that I will stick with just the sleeveless version of this but if you want a sleeve I will give you the measurements for the sleeve and you will have to join the sleeve into this um, um, the opening that you have but you know it would be better because I, I, I'm gonna buy a set of uh, new 
what you call um looms you know and these looms the you know in in the center of the two pegs that you have there is another peg you see and um, because the round loom have, has, uh, is something that you can use easily you know you can put back the 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 armhole back onto a round loom and work the sleeve and not have to worry about joining the sleeve onto the body of the garment you see you just need to put each of these onto a peg but to do that you can't use the traditional 41 peg loom you see you need the 82 peg round loom that means in between each of the two pegs of the round loom there's an additional um, peg you see and you use the second smallest loom not the smallest of the round loom i think that one has hang on let me just check how many pegs that one will have see because there are usually when you buy a set of looms they come in a set of four right now the round loom the um it's got 31 pegs so it should have 62 pegs if you can get the knit uk loom uh, the knit uk loom has got a another pet peg that you can slot in between the each of the round pegs you see so like for instance if you have a 41 peg loom which is the largest of the round loom you can make it an 82 peg so with that you can use finer gauge like this because the round peg the distance between the pegs are what make it being able to carry the thicker pegs you see now um what i mean is that you see these are this is a round peg the unit uk loom has got space here in between here there is a slot for another peg to come in between here you see so if you get the 31 peg round loom with the extra pegs you can actually use this kind of finer yarn you see this type of yarn you can use on it this thin yarn you, know? you can put onto the round loom because the round loom can't really handle this kind of thin yarn unless you uh, use several strands of the same yarn you see but however if you have this extra peg in between you can actually handle the finer yarn so you take the edge of these stitches put it back onto the 31 peg loom which has got uh, with the additional pegs it will become 62 pegs put it back and work a sleeve with that and you can go and decide on whatever length you want after trying it on you measure from the where this ends on your body to your end of your wrist where you want the sleeve to end and do that length with the loom if you want a sleeve i just realized that this um <laughs> there is this, all this horoscope what you're supposed to, what i was wondering you know when i was looking at the video why you had written knife avoid knife sharpening slaughtering and then i realized because accidents can happen you see so because this horoscope from 1993 tells you what are the things to avoid in the month so that you don't get you know like buying a new car you probably get cheated or you you meet with an accident with a new car installing a safe you know these chinese they have all these kind of stuff and then what it's offering sacrifices or worship praying for good fortune <laughs> just in case you were wondering what those messages were that were on my on my background it's important that the loom that you pick uh, for the sleeve should be able to go all the way over your shoulder like this okay like this should be able to go all the way like this see it's going over my shoulder my shoulder is there see it can go over so if you if your loom can do that then you can use that loom to make the sleeve now the other thing i wanted to point out the one that i got recently from knit uk if you notice the pegs are smaller than the one that is the normal one that you get for the large peg for the long, round looms you see you see these pegs are very big if you look at these pegs they are the same size as those long loom pegs you see so you can use very fine gauge uh, much more finer gauge yarn with this kind of a loom and what's more there are additional um is that by using see they come with these these pegs see they come with these pegs so by using these pegs what you can do is you can make the gauge even smaller by adding those pegs in between here you make the gauge even smaller which you can't do with this loom you see this loom is fixed and it is it has to use very much thicker yarn whereas this one you can use finer gauge you know three millimeter four millimeter 
yarn can be used on this type of pegs you see so that is why i decided to buy this loom you see because i found that i was unable to do do sleeves and all that and i can also work with the finer gauge yarn on these looms on these looms here we have the finished neck and because of the nature of the ah all the time this thing does this this camera is going uh, because of the nature of the knit stitches it tends to curl you know on the sides so as a result you get this naturally curling collar and here is the overlap bit that we i told showed you how to sew this and this is how you do the join you see it's it says you have to do this as smoothly as possible eh? you can look at the youtube video how to join horizontal and vertical neat uh, stitches so that you can get a neat finish like this you know and this is how the collar is it should be big enough for your head you know if you followed the measurements i gave you and i did about this front was about 18 inches eh? and the back was 33 inches on a 22 inch loom that was the 62 peg loom okay so let's hope you enjoy this pattern happy looming